welcome back. I've put six feeder fulls of grub out towards those reeds. The little marker is that tallest bush out there is where I've actually put the grub. I'm about a metre short of the reeds. Give myself a chance if I do a road carp. Got out on a six mil expander pellet. No knocks or anything yet. And I'm also loose feeding four mil pellet on the Wagner line. I'll put some out to show you where. Just out off the edge of these reeds. An absolutely glorious morning, time's about quarter to seven. The world's waking up, I can hear the lorries and everything going up and down the motorway. But it's nice not to have to hold a pole at 16 metres today because that absolutely crucified me last time. So that's why today I've got on the running line have a little bit of a break, catch a few fish. Always roach and rud, skim a bream. But as I say, an eel possibility, because I'll put worm on shortly. A tench isn't out of the question, and there are quite a lot of little carp in here, as well as big ones. I'd like a little one, please. Keep casting regular with the feeder rod so that I get a bit of bait out there. We'll have it in and I'll uh, put it back out where it is. Got a breath of wind, absolutely glorious. A joy to be out. That's a little six mil expander I've got on the hook. Fill the feeder up with the ground bait. Line up with my mark over there, you should see the splash. I am clipped up. There it is. Sink the line. Star will line sinks ever so well. The rod's a bit higher off the water than I'd like it to be, but uh, it's the best I can do at the moment. As there's no wind, I can get away with it today. Put a few more four mils out on the Wagner line. Only put out 10, 12, something like that, with many. Got about four foot of water out there, and I would imagine I'm casting the feeder into about three foot. My margin here is about three foot, so I would guess it's about the same over the other side. Should see a few knocks indications shortly if the fish are starting to move over there. There's a little dot then. Could have been a lighter.
thank you for watching the videos. I know it's not always all action, but uh, I, I do it in real time. So if the, if the fish are anxious and feeding, we're okay. If they're a little bit lethargic, we don't get many. But uh, if you'd like to subscribe, that'd be lovely. If you want to leave any comments, feel free. I'll try and answer them. I hope to have a go towards the end of the week, as we're in this settled period for a few mackerel. We'd ask to get a few for tea just before they uh, disappear back to Cornwall for breeding. So we might try that on Friday. Today's Tuesday. High time Friday will be about six o'clock in the evening, which would be ideal. I'll go down again with my little homemade lures, freshwater rod, for a bit of sport. As long as the wind doesn't get up. If we, the wind's supposed to be light all week. So uh, we might get away with it. I'll put a couple of worms on this one next on the feeder rod. I expect we'll get a response pretty quickly on those. Oh, Kingfisher, just got across the water, how lovely. Some lovely wildlife up here, you can see there's plenty of roach and rub jumping about. Right, I'll come in and let's put a couple of worms on. I think I've said before, I get my worms on the internet off of Willy Worms. They're very, very good quality. Last for ages. I keep them in the bag that they come in. And they just go on and on forever. They're great. I'll put a dead maggot on as well, just to keep the worm on. Just using barbless hooks, of course, the worm could quite easily wiggle his way off but with a head bagger just to hold him on there he's fine there's the bait a nice wiggly worm see if that gets a response line up with the marker again sink the line
surprised if that doesn't get oh bite straight away with the nick probably a roach These bad and wafters are quite good actually, just as a change bait. I don't rely on them because I've had a few bream on them, a few carp, but uh, they're quite good because they just lift the bait off the bottom. We'll give them a go later. more vicious. Only a small fish I think. But as we thought the worm found one straight away. They do like a bit of worm. Probably a little skim of bream I would think. Yeah, skimmer breed. That's a good sign. Bit hooked in the bottom lip. That's ideal. Bait again. Put another worm on. Keep it off with a dead maggot just to keep the worm on. Go. Load it up in the tree again. Sit the line. Sun's just starting to come over the top of the trees now. It's going to be a very warm day, I think. Go get me out on shortly. Put a few more four mils out. These late late summer, early autumn sessions are very nice. You've got to go a long way to beat them, it's not super hot. I woke up, set the alarm this morning for half past five, uh, and at half past five it is still dark, but about quarter to six the light will start to come up. <coughs> Shorter days now, but nice days. Of course, unlike Evegate Lake, the big lake, 
where the fish seem to switch off as soon as the first couple of frosts come. Here, they fish just, well, just as well. You can come up here on a, the coldest of days and still catch five or six pounds of small fish without any effort at all. It's great. Just scale everything down a little bit, come down to smaller hooks, line to line, smaller baits, and uh, it'll keep you busy all day. Obviously all but the most hardy carp anglers probably don't bother coming in the winter. But the carp in here go to just over 20 pounds. There's a few catfish, biggest one so far 44 pounds. Don't want to catch him today. Rumours of some tench up to about six pounds. Never seen one yet, but you never know. We had the perch last year when nobody thought they were here. So that was a good sign. Plenty of eels. But of course you won't catch them in the winter, they can hibernate. They say there's a few chub, what there are are very big, four, five, six pounders. There was even rumour of one or two barbel, but uh, I, I think rumour's probably the right word. A couple of little digs there on the feeder. fish over that waggler line, they're uh, moving about, they're only be probably small roach and rudder at the moment, but uh, I'll go out there with a 6 mil on next time we come back to you with the video and uh, we'll see how we do, but I'll just have the first hour or so on the feeder, just to see how we get on. Another little tap bed. If we get a carp or an eel, it should be a better bite, it should just drag it round. It shouldn't be any bucking about. Right, I'll come back to you in a bit. See you in a little while.